If you look deep into the eyes of Vinny Pazienza, you sense and feel the exact same emotions that run deep in the soul of this man, Roberto Duran. Simply, they don't like each other. And the lucky for you, remember, you're too much tough. I'm ready for you. Yeah, I'm ready for you, Pazienza. Someone knows how to say he's been here for 20 years. And somebody take him to school. Take the guy back to school. I'm really learning how to speak English. Last June, the legendary Duran, the four-time world champion, proudly walked toward the ring with the intent of destroying the man who talks about him with such disdain. Then, as the Enza, two-time world champion, entered the arena, ready to unleash his fury on his bitter rival, Duran. The battle lines were drawn. They finally stood face to face. In round two, Pazienza went down. It was ruled a slip, but the Duran corner thought differently. Three rounds later, Pazienza would go down for the first time in his career. Duran showed that his famous hands and stone could still crack the steel jaw of Pazienza. But Pazienza, who had suffered through the pain of a broken neck, would not be denied. He bounced up and went to work. Over the next six rounds, Pazienza went into a frenzy, unleashing an assault on his opponent's body and head, making him look tired and older than his 42 years. As the rounds went on, the punches would take their toll, and even though the proud Duran withstood the attack, was it too late? At the end, each of the fighters was convinced that he had won the bout, then the decision. For the winner, Vinny, the Pasmanian Devil! for the Pasmanian Devil. Duran was furious, disbelieving the scorecards and demanded a rematch, as did many who saw that brawl. So the time is now. Pazienza, Duran too, a matter of pride. The famed boardwalk in Atlantic City, built in 1870. Today, its four miles are lined by towering hotels and casinos and at the heart of the boardwalk, there it is, the Atlantic City Convention Center. Outside, it's cooled down after an unseasonably warm day, but we expect things to heat back up tonight for Pazienza Duran 2, a matter of pride. A matter of pride, a matter of hate, take your pick. They're both accurate. These two fighters, quite simply, don't like each other. And hello, everyone. I'm Bill McAtee. Welcome to Atlantic City. Tonight, TVKO presents the rematch between these two legendary champions, Vinny Pazienza and Roberto Duran. We expect surprises between these two. We got a big surprise yesterday at the weigh-in. The surprise was that nothing happened. Both fighters conducting themselves with the proper amount of decorum. Duran was on the scales first, and he weighed in at 167 and three quarters. And how serious is Roberto Duran? He made weight a week ago and maintained it. Vinny Pazienza was next and he tipped the scales at 168. In fact, the only excitement came when the Paz spotted the dozen or so pizzas that had been ordered and Vinny went right to work. And another championship fight on tap tonight, the IBC World Welterweight Championship, which is vacant, and guess who's back? The Macho Man, Hector Camacho, going after his fourth world championship against the 1988 Olympian who is at a crossroads in his professional career, Todd Foster. So a big night of boxing here in Atlantic City. It's good to have you with us, and let's send you ringside now to Al Albert and Sean O'Grady. Gentlemen? Thank you, Bill, and uh, Sean, tonight we'll be seeing a little of what is missing in boxing today, a fight that combines passion and personalities, a little showbiz, yep. Pazienza brings the flash and the flamboyancy into the ring. They're starting to make a movie based on his life. And then you have Duran, who uh, is Roberto Duran. He is a legend, and at 43 still has the hands of stone, ask Vinny Pazienza. These are two cocky guys. The one thing they do agree on is that they hate one another, but actually they're the best thing to happen to one another. You know, you know, Al, this is really what the sport needs, personalities facing one another. Yeah, as you mentioned, they both hate one another, but the, they are the best thing for one another. They should love one another. And for that reason, they have really resurrected their careers. And we look forward to that main event. They have a lot of things going for the winner of this fight, yeah. uh, Pazienza and Duran, in the main event. 
Well, mix into all of that, uh, we also have tonight the Macho Man, Hector Macho Camacho. Remember Boom Boom Mancini, when he fought him, uh, referred to him as a cartoon character, kind of a Roger Rabbit bouncing all over the place. But this is a very different Macho Camacho step in the ring today. Well, Mancini wouldn't recognize him today. The Macho Man has mellowed. Yes, Hector Macho Camacho is not the same party animal that he was back in the 1980s, and it shows in his performances. Ice crystals removed. Ice smoothness remains. A revolutionary way to brew beer. Discover the bad ice. Ice smooth. Ice brewed. And the only one with a patent to prove it. Face it. Shaving is a pain. It strips away the skin's moisture, leaving it hot, dry, and burning. But now there's proof you can take the heat out of shaving. Introducing Sensitive from Old Spice. It's the one with cooling sensates, an invigorating blast of real refreshment that cools skin scorched by shaving. Prove it to yourself. Try new Sensitive from Old Spice. It's more than a great scent. This is a cooling blast of real refreshment that takes the heat out of shaving. Yes, indeed, it is macho time, and this one is scheduled for 12 rounds. The IBC, the International Boxing Council, part of the alphabet soup of boxing that uh, Mr. Hazard was talking about, attaching a belt to this one. Hector Macho Camacho versus Todd Foster. It is a crucial bout for both fighters, and no one knows that more than the macho man himself. In his 15th year as a pro, Hector Camacho gets ready for tonight's fight with a new understanding of who he is, where he's been, and where he's going. Hector Camacho, flashy and flamboyant, a colorful star, lightning in the ring, untouchable. A champion at the age of 21. He won his first 39 fights, conquering three world crowns. He was full of magnetism, but also full of himself. Life in the fast lane. Looked to have caught up with a macho man. In two more title chances, he lost a one-sided decision to Julio Cesar Chavez and holding on in a lopsided 12-round defeat to Felix Trinidad. At 31, it looked like Camacho's career was winding down. But four months after the Trinidad fight last May, Camacho began a nice little turnaround. He would win four straight, going through a reversal, demonstrating a sense of purpose and reflection. Two before, I was 21, 22, 25, 28, which is the age that when you are, you know, such a popular commodity like myself and you make this kind of money. And being a fly young brother like myself, you know, live, smart, attractive, good looking. You know, living well, living, living fast, you know, in the fast lane with money, you know, and, and I had no responsibilities. When I came in and fell in love with this young, beautiful lady by the name of, uh, you know, let me say the name right, because, <laughs> <don't know> <laughs> uh, Amy, yeah. you know, Amy, um, everything changed, you know. I got a lot of loving in the house, I got a home, I got a family, I got two beautiful sons. Uh, which I share a lot of time with. I change pampers, I make milk, I make food. I make sure all three of them meet. I make sure there's money in the bank. Uh, you know, it doesn't give me much time to flirt like the way I need to in the street. And then when I do go out, you know, it's so good at home that my lady don't want me to get into no kind of trouble out there. Because if I do get into any kind of trouble, and like the past incident, people taking cheap shots at me, it could cost me jail time, and that's jail time without being with my family, my lovely family. With a new outlook, Camacho settled down a little bigger with more power. He sent all four recent opponents to the canvas. He understands what he has to do, how he has to look to further his resurgence. I got to be looking very explosive, very sharp, and very scrappy out there. You know, I can't be looking like this guy is giving me, you know, a hell to go, you know, while well, he's barely hanging on. You know, so 
I'm in great condition to go 12 rounds and look explosive. Explosive describes Camacho's opponent, Todd Foster, the former U.S. Olympian. He first on the pro scene, throwing loads of leather, averaged about 100 punches a round. He won his first 22 fights, 19 by knockout. But in his first big test, he was caught by former world champ Jimmy Paul, who was coming out of a four-year retirement. Foster would lose two more times, each time after he had built up some momentum. He steps in the ring tonight with a record of 33-3, and unranked, and he understands the importance of facing Camacho. This is the, the biggest fight in my career. It is the fight in my career, so I mean, it means everything to me. It's a must-win fight for me. I've, I've trained hard for the fight, and I'm ready for the fight. So they come together tonight for both a must-win. Foster the puncher, Camacho the boxer, a classic matchup. I think I'm going to have to double his output, but, you know, at least, you know, if he throws 40, I'm going to have to throw 80 punches, and I'm going to have to land for a lot of them. You know, I'm, I'm a pinpoint puncher, so I'll be able to find him. You know, I won't always hit him in the head, but I'll, but I'll hit him somewhere. I don't see this guy dominating. You know, I see myself too explosive. I see myself with quick combinations, a lot of lateral movement, too sharp, too slick. Uh, I, I could see myself busting him up, cutting him up, you know? Maybe stopping him and cut, maybe knocking him out. I could see it, you know, I just do. Ah, the joys of a minivan. That big sliding door. That heavy, removable third seat. And those rear windows that don't roll down. Hmm, what could be better? Introducing Odyssey. With four doors and an easy fold-away rear seat, it's not just a minivan. It's a Honda. It's your money. Why wait any longer than you have to to get your hands on it? Get it fast with H&R Block's cash back. We'll do all the paperwork, calculate and discount your return. There's no extra charge for preparing your return. And with cash back, we make sure you get your money as fast as it can be done. Nothing's faster, nothing's easier. So what are you waiting for? Come to H&R Block today and get your money fast. Cash back from H&R Block. Nothing's faster, nothing's easier. Camacho Camacho, the age of 32, steps in the ring with a record of 48 victories, 3 defeats, 22 knockouts, and those official records supplied by the ring magazine, the Bible of Boxing, and a very original, always comes up with a, a new ensemble, and I think that's when he will finally retire, when he just can't create a, a new... Uh, a new ensemble. When the closet's full, that's when he'll retire. Oh, big closets, too. All right, let's check out these two fighters now on the tail of the tape. Hector Camacho, as I had mentioned, has won titles at 130, 135, and 140. He's very comfortable now at the welterweight division with a pound to spare. Todd Foster, who broke in as a lightweight, and he says uh, making weight was part of his difficulty in a couple of his uh, defeats. It really held him back. And uh, right now, he loves 146 and a quarter fighting as a welterweight. The rules governing this fight, the IBC rules. And the rules as such, no standing eight count. Three knockdown rule is in effect. You can never be saved by the bell in any round. This is a 12 rounder and scoring on the 10 point must scoring system. So we're ready for the introductions. And let's go into the ring. Here's Michael Buffett. Ladies and gentlemen, your undisputed, undefeated king of beers, Bud Weiser. It's always been true, this Bud's for you. And new contenders with Dylan Productions along with the Casino Association of New Jersey presents World Championship Boxing. This contest is sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Boxing Commissioner Larry Hazard Sr., Chairman Jerry Gormley, Board Members Gary Shaw and Al Daniels, Deputy Commissioners Lawrence Wallace and John Greco, Chief Physician at Ringside, Dr. Frank B. Doggett. Attending Physicians, Dr. Ken Remsen and Dr. Wayne Gibbons. The timekeeper is Earl Curry. 
This belt is also sanctioned by the International Boxing Council, President Joseph Gennaro, Founder and Chairman of Ringside, Mr. Marty Cohen. The three judges scoring this bout on a 10-point must system will be Barbara Perez, Tim Figley, and Shafiq Rashada. And when the bell rings, a man in charge of the action working for the 52nd time in a world title bout, referee Frank Cappuccino. And now, ladies and gentlemen, 12 rounds of boxing for the vacant IBC Welterweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the purple and gray, and weighing in at 146 and one quarter pounds, from the Big Sky Country, Great Falls, Montana, this 1988 U.S. Olympian is now 33 and 3 as a professional. 29 of his 33 victories by KO. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the former lightweight champion of the world, Todd Kid Foster. And his opponent across the ring, wearing the black and silver, and weighing in at 146 pounds. In his professional career, he's captured three world titles with a record of 48 and 3. 20 KOs, pardon me, 22 KOs to his credit. Fighting now out of Clewiston, Florida, ladies and gentlemen, the former three-time world champion, Hector Macho Camacho. Gentlemen, you were both given your instructions by the New Jersey Control Board. Protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves. Wait for the bell. Todd Foster, a punch stat champion. He throws about 80 to 100 punches per round. And uh, he said he will be making contact with Camacho. He'll be going right at him. Young man has won 33 and lost three. A lot of championships uh, around here, but uh, Foster was never a world champion. The highest he was ranked was number eight, but he is currently unranked, and he is looking straight across at the man who really can re-energize the career of Todd Foster in Hector Camacho. Camacho at the age of 32, but he is just finishing, Sean, the busiest year in his career going back to 1985. He had five fights in 1994. Usually he's fighting somewhere around two, maybe three times a year. And quite frankly, that was getting him into trouble. He had so much time between fights, he'd get into tr trouble. Now he's training all the time for all these upcoming fights. And he has really put it together after most people figured it was over. After Chavez, after Trinidad, and the Camacho showing a turn. And here he has a fighter who he feels made to order. Todd Foster just coming in. Yeah, Todd Foster's going to come right to him and coming in right to him early in this fight, the two banged heads. That's some of the changes that you're talking about about Hector Camacho. He's busy, he's active. It is difficult to beat an active fighter. And he has certainly been that. I mean, he's fighting, you know, not, he's been fighting nobody's recently but he has been performing in front of a crowd in the ring well he's been very honest with his comeback yeah. uh, honest in the fact that he is training he is in the ring he has a sense of purpose both in the ring and out of the ring but also honest in the fact he says hey the last four guys that i fought after trinidad this year i mean i was overmatched and i should have been knocking these guys down he also feels that he's about two levels above the talent of Todd Foster. So uh, Hector Camacho never pulled any punches, and he's honest about the, the assessment of himself. And he also knows he has to look sharp, and he has to look explosive. And he is, uh, seems to have had a little power going up to 147 pounds. Uh, quite frankly, he's down now tonight to uh, 146. His last four fights have been in the range of 151 and one to 153. 
not looking like the macho man, looking more like the muscle man in some of those fights, but he is, he's trimmed, he's serious, he's on a pay-per-view fight. If he wins this fight, he looks ahead at, at, at the guy who wants is Pernell Whitaker. He says Whitaker stepping up against Julio Cesar Vasquez as a junior middleweight moving up perhaps just for that one fight there's, there's no names out there Camacho feels in the welterweight division and now Camacho putting together some of those speedy combinations he gets Foster coming in oh again it's Camacho and Foster now keeping his distance as the first round comes to an end and give that one to Hector Camacho Side impact airbag. Drive safely. So I'm channel surfing. When it occurs to me, I wouldn't mind hitting one of those fashion TV shows in Paris. You know, I'd find out what's in, find out what's out. That'd be cool. And who knows? Maybe someone over there would appreciate the enduring qualities of a true Canadian lager. Hey, trendy colors come and go. Me? I prefer blue. You come in and counter him. There's you. Todd Foster, He's not Jesse going Reed. Punch. You stay ahead of him now. Listen, you've got to take control. Find him with a jab and start working to the left side of him and start whacking those body shots. Put your buddy. All right? Find him. They want him to touch Camacho. He touched him. Back him up. Throw him off balance. Jesse Reed, an outstanding trainer, giving great directions. There's some of the touching from Hector Camacho, touching from that southpaw stance, and backing up is, is Todd Foster. Where Todd Foster has had trouble in his career has been when he straightens up and backs right straight up. Which you saw at the end of the first round. And look at the respect he's now giving to Camacho. He is not on top of Camacho, he's not in range to touch him. Camacho, even when they're in close, has the moves, has the angles. Yeah, this is craftiness from Camacho. See inside, Hector tying up, holding on. He said, I'm a better fighter now because I don't want to get in trouble out of the ring. I'm more stable in the ring. I'm skilled and I'm polished. The last title that uh, Camacho has owned, the WBO Junior Welterweight Championship, the Boom Boom Mancini, and that was four years ago. And if you're not counting WBO titles, you go back to 1986 when he was the WBC lightweight champion, the victory over Jose Ramirez, and a couple of defenses. So Camacho is in and out, Foster trying to find him. And Camacho once again keeping cool with one of a breezy trunks. And right, Foster may have uh, struck with the right hand. All the way back. Yeah, against the left-handed fighters, those right hands work real well. It's difficult to use your jab because of their right hand, but Todd Foster is using it. There it is from Foster. If he can continue to use that jab, he can score with it. Maybe he can get Hector watching the jab, and then he sneak in a right hand. Well, the two got to watch their heads. That's what Frank Cappuccino just told him. Foster, who uh, has a problem with the cuts, He's been down just twice in his career, in two fights. But once he was clocked, he was gone. Jimmy Paul knocked him down two times, and in a, a loss to John Larks, he was down four times in the fight. But that was his last fight at 135, and he said he just could not make weight anymore, and that was the result. Yeah, very tough, Todd Foster. Not afraid to get hit and not afraid to hit back. 35 seconds to go in round number two. He was involved in the bizarre Olympic incident in Seoul. He was fighting the Korean fighter. 
and there were several rings in the venue and during the fight the bell rang from another ring but Foster's opponent thought it was their bell so he dropped his guard and Foster dropped him and it was ruled that uh, they should fight a rematch which happened a couple hours later and then Foster dropped them officially and won the fight now there could be some blood from the uh, right eye of Foster But perhaps from that clash of heads earlier in this round, in the first round, too, they banged heads. TVKO with a presentation from Atlantic City, the convention center, Macho Camacho, now center stage, with Vinny Pazienza and Roberto Duran waiting in the wing here for the main event. Frank Rodriguez, I think he's showing you what he wants there. He wants more body punches. Somebody with four and five. Don't get up in the air. Stay low. All right? Who's got the mouthpiece? Stay low. Stay in this chair until the bell rings. Don't get up. Excellent instruction. Stay low. Remember what I said? round before last about Todd Foster getting in trouble when he raises his head up. Jesse Reed sees that. He wants to keep him down. Lower your center of gravity. When you get hit and your head is way up in the air, it really looks bad. It hurts too. When you're down, you can take that shot and come back with another. Foster has had pretty good success against southpaws and also against boxers. Trying to cut off the, the ring. He says he doesn't want to chase Camacho. And this is a pretty big ring to Camacho's advantage, which later may serve well for Vinny Pazienza. A lot of factors about this ring that may serve well for, for Vinny. Downstairs to the body goes Todd Foster. Good for him, following instructions. You know, with a fighter like Camacho, he is too good to stand out there and try to punch to his head. He's too good. You have to go into this fight with a plan, and that plan's got to be go downstairs. Don't try to don't try to hit his head. Go up, go down to the body first. Got to wear down the body. Ah, 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 come on out! Come on out! Come on out! Camacho turned pro at the age of 18. 14 years ago, 1980. He's won three world championships. He won his first 39 fights before losing the WBO crowd to Greg Helgen. And he lost that fight by one point. And in that fight, he was penalized one point for not touching gloves at the start of the final round. That was the old, rebellious Camacho. Right now he's touching gloves with Foster. I think he's touching Foster's face with his gloves. The records of these two fighters. Big numbers up there. John, how do you think that this new and improved version of Camacho would have done against Chavez and Trinidad? Well, when I've seen Camacho in the past against the ordinary fighters, he makes them look like amateurs. When he goes in there against somebody that has the power, that's where he has his problems. In, in the Trinidad fight and the Julio Cesar Chavez fight, Hector Camacho didn't really win a round. What he must do, I think, at this point in his career, is learn how to win the, some of the rounds, if not all of the rounds, for some of the bigger fights. There's a good straight left for him. So that's, that's what I see in him now. He is trying to reacquaint himself with these fighters and trying to win some of these rounds, box some of these rounds, adapt, change, show the versatility of Hector Camacho. Good combination from Foster downstairs and then up to the head. And good movement from Hector Camacho with a southpaw fighter. See how he moves? Hector moves to his right. It is a more natural move for a lefty. But Todd Foster, he's got the power in the right hand. He has to keep resetting that back foot. That's the confusion that right-handed fighters have against the southpaws. Basketball nets have it rough. Just hanging there, all vulnerable, no one to protect them. When I play defense, I do whatever it takes to save basketball nets from unnecessary wear and tear.
On offense, I'm not quite so sensitive. Before you rule on the paint, see your neighborhood home hardware dealer. We're Canada's paint experts. For beauty tone paint. Thousands of colors. Homemade in our very own plant. One of the most advanced in North America. Name brand quality. Beauty tone goes to the industry's toughest testing. 900 dealer buying power. Guarantees a great price. Home hardware. Home of Canada's paint experts. Great price. Friendly advice at home. Sega Sports, real teams, real players. Uh, Let's get ready to rumble! Sega! Where's our Metamucil Smooth? This is about 10 cents cheaper a glass. Doesn't look smooth. It's not even orange. Metamucil Smooth pours easily through this strainer. Ordinary fiber is too gritty, and the difference is only about 10 cents a glass. Metamucil Smooth. Good taste, good value. Well, you know, Rodriguez told Hector to go to the body in the last between the rounds, and he did not really do that in the last round. With a fighter like Foster, that's difficult to do because the way Foster is getting down now, you got to reach around for that body. And Foster coming out, you can sense the air of confidence. Comes off a good third round. And there's Camacho holding him. Camacho, the veteran referee, explaining to the two, come on, let's start fighting. Frank doesn't put up for any of those hydrants. Now, Frank Cappuccino, outstanding referee, and a tough referee. He's got tough with the crowd a few times in some fights. <laughs> he works in close yeah. to the fighters, too. He's been nailed. Oh, yeah. He's been hit. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Former boxer, Frank Cappuccino. Never down for the count. Yeah. He's from that great fraternity, Cappa Cappuccino. Good. Sweeping left from Hector Camacho. This is scheduled for 12. Todd Foster has never gone 12 in his career. He's only gone 10 four times compared to 24 occasions by Camacho. Camacho knows how to spread out a fight and really pace himself. And you can bet that uh, Camacho right now sizing up his opponent. And as he had said earlier, if I could dissect just like this and take him out in around six or seven, otherwise, He'll take him later in the fight and try to wear Todd Foster down. This is the opportunity. Foster has to strike here. Oh, snapping the shots out. Camacho, just as Foster had gained in confidence, Camacho now moving him back. Yeah, Hector Camacho said Todd Foster will be perfect for me. He's a banger. He comes right straight in. He's, he's custom made for me. And you know what? In that sense, it's, it's exactly right. Foster now, out of anger, is rushing in just what Hector Camacho needs. This is where Hector Camacho can shine. Foster must try to work his way in, work his way in behind some punches. Now, the last round I talked about how Foster was jabbing, jabbing with Hector. Now he's not been jabbing as much this round. That, could be one of the many problems. The other problem is removing that glove from the front of his face. Slipping a little bit on some tape. There's some tape in the middle of the ring that Foster slipped on. Oh, yeah. This is some of the added power that Hector Camacho possesses now as a welterweight. That was a little bitty punch. He put his weight behind it. Some of the tricks of the trade. And that ends the round. And Camacho now has made it five for five in his last five Listen fights. He has put at me in the face. Man on the what campus. What are you doing? Stop him when you're inside. Let that rip. You hear me? That's why you got drilled. You relaxed and he hit you on the break. Now you get your hands and start punching until that referee says stop. You hear what I'm saying? Put yeah. this nice guy stuff. You can win this damn thing. Get on this guy and start. Pretty good idea. Wait till the referee. 
says Greg, there is what happened. He walked in. Jesse Reed said he let down for a moment. And then the left hand, rubbing left hand. Confident Hector Slapping George Foreman yep. versus Michael Moore type. Right on him. shot. Yeah, while tying up the right hand, Todd Foster got hit with the left hand. Jesse Reed said, let do down, don't let down in there. All right, here comes Foster now. No more Mr. Nice Guy. Okay. And you see the swelling around the eye. Macho Camacho starting to pile up the points. And you can kind of see the points on Foster's face. And Foster, who was generally pumping around 80 to 100 punches per round, is way below par in this fight. Oh, there's why. Being Freezing beaten. him. Yeah. yeah. When he gets hit, he freezes. He backs up and he, and he freezes too. And a very Hector, a very uh, patient Hector Macho Camacho comes out for this fifth round. He feels right now he has Foster where he wants him. And even in his corner, I told him just moments ago, no hurry, do what you're doing, you're doing fine. It's not a hectic no, Camacho. That's, that's exactly yes. what I wanted to say. Thanks. Well, you keep feeding me these lines and I'll use them and you okay. give me the credit for Good combination. <laughs> Right now, the man with a good combination. Oh, yeah. oh, boy. Camacho. Oh, Foster is whacked. Camacho moving in. He senses that this is a window of opportunity. Does he end it here, or does he want more airtime? Cappuccino should stay close. Foster holding on. Cappuccino takes a look, separates the two. There is a, a standing eight count is in effect in New Jersey. And in this IBC fight, and Foster crumbles to the canvas. That's all. And that is it. Hector Macho Camacho unleashes the power of a, of a welterweight. And he has blasted out Todd Foster. And he looks to the heavens, and he knows there may be some new big paydays ahead. At this added weight, he says I have more power. And he knocked down Pat Lawler in two fights ago, Rusty Derwin in his last fight. Having been able to put them down, not able to put out Pat Lawler. But tonight he sets up Todd Foster, cracks him with good sharp combination, puts him down and then takes him out. Here's what happened. Todd Foster rushing in. Crack. Wobbling around. Todd Foster out on his feet. Hector Camacho knows it. Goes in to close. Patient now at age 32. Hector Camacho knew he had to settle down. Make his punches count. Another look at it. Todd Foster just an opponent. Custom made for Hector Macho Camacho. And Camacho took him out. pain relievers often aren't enough. Doctors recommend Robaxacet. It combines two active ingredients. One to relieve your back pain. The other to relax your tense back muscles. Ask your pharmacist for Robaxacet, helping you walk away from back pain. At Swiss Chalet, it's always been a combination of things that keeps people coming back. And now, we're bringing you more combinations than ever. Choose from our famous Frank Cappuccino calls a halt to the bout. The official time, one minute, 45 seconds of round number five. Winning his fourth world title, he's now the IBC Welterweight Champion of the World. It's Macho time, Hector Macho Camacho. Hector Macho Camacho plays to the crowd. He'll join us at ringside shortly, but now let's send it up to Bill.
All right, Al, thank you very much. Hector Camacho winning his fourth world title, the IBC World Welterweight Championship, and near the end of the fourth round, Foster went down with that uh, Camacho short left hand, and then in the fifth round, he begins to pound Todd Foster. There's the left that wobbles the legs of Todd Foster. He still looks game. He looked over several times at the referee as if to say, I'm okay, he's moving me back, but I'm still hanging in there. And there had been questions about Camacho's power. After his uh, previous fights over the last year or so, but then in his last two, he's looked very impressive, knocking out Rusty Derwin several months ago. And tonight, you see that sense of power that Camacho was talking about as he absolutely pounds Todd Foster. And this one wisely stopped in the fifth round. There you see Todd Foster looking over. He did that several times. And that left right there sent Todd Foster to the canvas. And there was no doubt it was all over. Hector Macho Camacho, the new IBC World Welterweight Champion. Let's go down now to Alan Shaw. Al? All right. Thank you, Bill. Hector, you said you had to look sharp. You had to look, look explosive. You did just that. But you also said that... Todd Foster was a, a custom-made opponent for you. So how do you judge your performance tonight? Well, it's just like I expected. He came in, he wasn't shy to throw his punches. He kept trying to bring it to me. But as round went was going by, I knew I was going to start getting closer and closer to the target. Uh, he was a pretty hard puncher. I felt around the body and once in the head. But nothing damaged you. I just didn't want to get hit with nothing. I want to stay sharp. You, you feel that you finished this one actually sooner than you had anticipated? Yeah, but you know, I was just taking it as it come. All I know that I had it look very explosive. I was so hyped for this. No way I was going to lose today. No way. This is your first look at the knockout. Uh, why don't you tell, tell us about it? Well, you know, I got it with that same punch. You know, oh. the, 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 the and then it was just mental time for him with this shot and pull him out. I knew it was hard punching. So I thought it would knock him out if I take it to him. Hector, you had cracked him in the first round, but you didn't really knock him out until the fifth. Did you know? From that first round that you cracked him, did you know he would go if you put him down? Yeah, I thought some quick shots to pull him out, but you know, patiently looking sharp. I know the eye is on me. You yeah. know, nobody was whispering. Yeah. Everybody was just looking because it wasn't like a fighting a Chavez, a Trinidad, or a Whitaker, you know. That's when they, you see arguments and fights in the stands, you know. But this was just a, 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 a process. Part of the patience that uh, has recently happened in your life, right? Sitting yeah, in the ring. it's great because it gives me a title. I read it and I said, well, this ain't a real title. One title is like any title. I had the name. Now I'm going to start getting ready for Chavez. I want Chavez. I'm going to challenge him. I want for example, for my title. Okay? Whitaker is there. He has business. He has plans. We'll, we'll coast down the pace, you know? Uh, anybody, I'm here. I'm ready to fight. And what about the uh, possibility of Roberto Duran? Uh, well, if Duran makes 153, because regardless, Duran is a strong man. You fight him. You want to tell him come down 56. After, and he'll starve himself, but he put my food in his stomach one day before the fight. Next fight, he's going to be here like a house. All right, Roberto's just informed us he wants to get in the ring, so we thank you for joining <laughs> us, and we have to yes. move on. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Macho, 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 Macho. Let's go back up to Bill. Bill. Thanks, Al. All right, thank you very much, Al. That's the belt that belongs to Vinny Pazienza. His doctors told him he might never walk again. Was it fear or hatred of life confined to a wheelchair that drove Vinny Pazienza, forced him to fight the toughest opponent of his life, his own body, to deny the harsh realities of fate? Not only does Vinny Pazienza now walk, he struts. And after winning that battle, is it any wonder that Pazienza says now he is unafraid of any opponent, 